So recently I've been using Terraform's Helm provider to deploy Helm charts on my Kubernetes clusters. And I've also been using Terraform to deploy those Kubernetes clusters. So in this video, I just want to kind of do a high overview of how I deploy Jenkins using a Helm provider through Terraform while also using Terraform to deploy my EKS cluster. So I deploy an entire Kubernetes cluster and my application on top of it in one go and it takes about 15 minutes to deploy. So if you're not familiar with Terraform, real quick, Terraform is just a configuration tool for infrastructure's code. So you define the state that you want your infrastructure to look like using a code HashiCorp configuration language. And Terraform just applies that state and it makes sure everything looks the way you expect it to, right? And one of their providers that they provide is Helm. So you can point the Helm provider at a Kubernetes cluster and you can tell it to deploy Helm charts on those Kubernetes clusters. And if you're not familiar with Helm, Helm is what's known as a software package manager for Kubernetes. So someone develops an application, they containerize it, they deploy it to a Kubernetes cluster. Kubernetes app applications that run on Kubernetes usually have multiple different objects, right? Different resources. They have a service, they have a PVC, they have a PV, they have a replica set, a deployment, a stateful set, secrets, config maps. There's all these different things that you have to create to actually make an application run and run efficiently on a Kubernetes cluster. So what people can do is they can create all those resources, all those files, they can modularize them, they can parameterize them, they can package, the, package them up in what's known as a Helm chart and upload them to what's known as a Helm repo. And then you as the consumer later down the road, if you want that application installed on your Kubernetes um, cluster, you simply just download that Helm chart fill in the values into the values per, uh, file for the chart and off you go and you have a running application with all these different objects and resources created and you didn't have to create them yourself. And if you're not familiar with EKS real quick, it's just Amazon's offering of Kubernetes clusters, right? They create a control plane for you and you can join your worker nodes to that control plane uh, at any point and deploy uh, Kubernetes applications on it. So real quick, I said that I actually deploy an entire EKS cluster on AWS and the Helm chart all at the same time in one command. And the way I do that is with these, uh, these Terraform files here. So I've got a main.tf and what this does is if I've got a fresh AWS account or even one that already exists, but assuming these cider blocks aren't taken already, um, it's going ahead go ahead and create a VPC with the subnets and the security groups and the route tables and the internet gateway. And then it's going to take the EKS cluster.terraform and it's going to use the Kubernetes provider to then create a Kubernetes cluster in EKS, right? So I'm defining that I want Kubernetes, EKS, uh, and then I actually am also building a worker uh, node group using T3 medium EC2 instances. And I'm saying I want two of them, right? And then once the EKS cluster comes up, I'm actually using the Helm provider to then uh, authenticate so i'm telling the helm provider hey here's the kubernetes cluster that i would like to uh, connect to to apply my helm uh, resources over here in the resource section uh, so actually this host name matches up to the same host name uh, here in ek in the kubernetes provider more on that later uh, and then i'm saying you know here's the resources i want to deploy here's the charts i want to deploy from the uh, chart from the helm chart repository jenkins.io uh, apply the Jenkins chart, um, use this values file, which is actually a values file that exists locally in the same directory as the Helm release Terraform file. And then I'm actually overriding some of the parameters within the values file uh, here in the Helm chart or here in the Terraform code. So real quick, if we wanted to see an action, the EKS cluster being deployed, if not, and you just want to go over the Helm provider Jenkins specific stuff, skip this section. Anyway, I don't like to use my personal AWS account when I'm just testing stuff short term because I forget it's there and then I get a surprise bill at the end of the month. So what I do do is I already pay $40 a month for a cloud grew, no sponsorship, by the way. Um, I would love to do though. Uh, I, I go ahead and I go to the website and I log in and I go up here to playground, right? And I choose to launch an AWS sandbox. And what that does is it launches a temporary Amazon web services sandbox uh, using a random access key and secret key ID. And it's only good for about four to five hours, right? So I can then take these credentials here. So access key ID, and I can come over to my Visual Studio code and I can go ahead and do an AWS configure. Configure, I don't spell very well. 
Um, and then I can go ahead and plug it in the access key ID, act the actual secret access key region I want to deploy the cluster in and the output for it. And now what I can do is actually before I can get started, because I've deployed this previously, I need to remove all instances of any state from this directory. So I need to actually remove Terraform state, anything Terraform module, or anything related to the last run that I did. Um, I need to do I have anything else in here. Remove main.tf, release.tf, nope, okay. I think we're good. All right, so now I should be good to do a Terraform init. Go ahead and initialize the Terraform plan. Make sure I have all the required modules installed for the providers that I require. All right, Terraform's done initializing, so now we can go ahead and run a Terraform apply. Gonna go ahead and hit yes. I would like to perform these actions. And now what Terraform is gonna do is it's gonna reach out to AWS. It's gonna create the VPC, the subnets, the EKS cluster. And then when the EKS cluster comes up, it's actually going to install the Jenkins Helm uh, repo, the Jenkins Helm chart, sorry. I do wanna mention that sometimes it takes the worker nodes a little long to come up and you'll get an HTTP timeout when it, eventually while Terraform is waiting for them to come up because it needs those up in order to apply the Jenkins Helm chart. So if you do get a fail out after the worker nodes are built, waiting for them to come up, just do Terraform apply again, and it will rerun just the Jenkins Helm chart portion using the Helm provider and apply that. So while this is actually building out the cluster and then applying the Helm chart, let's go over some of the Helm provider specific things here, right? So actually, let me, uh, well, so we have our Helm provider, right? Like any other provider for Terraform, we pro we have to provide a provider. Um, and then we, we're doing Kubernetes. Um, so we need to define a host. And right here, this whole section, we're just defining where do we want to point our Helm charts to? What Kubernetes cluster do they want? Do we want to put them on? And how do we authenticate, right? And if you actually look at the documentation, um, there's different ways to authenticate. You know, you can just pass a straight kube config file. Um, you can straight pass uh, credentials configs, uh, or you can use an exec plugin, which we're doing here. Um, so basically we can like get an authentication token and authenticate that way. So back here, um, I'm saying host data.aws eks cluster dev cluster endpoint. So where did I get this? Like this isn't a very specific name, right? Well, this is actually when in a eks cluster .tf, um, I defined host data AWS eks cluster .dev cluster endpoint. So it's going to create the name for the cluster and it's going to be associated with this parameter right here. So this parameter right here in eks cluster .tf, let me, let me bring it over here, just needs to match the parameter over here in Helm release.tf for host. Same for cluster CA certificates. You know, these two parameters here need to match. And what else do we have? Uh, that's really it for, you know, as, as far as where I'm getting these two parameters. And then we have exec, right? This line is always gonna be the same. So you're gonna have the API version. I'm sorry, it should, normally it's always gonna be the same. Um, we're saying we want to, using the AWS CLI with Terraform, uh, we want to, access EKS, get a token, cluster name, and then again, actually, we need to make sure this cluster name matches the host name up here, assuming that we all want this in the same cluster that we deployed with EKS. If, if you have another cluster somewhere, just change the host name to match your cluster. So then we'll come down to resource, and resources, each resource is gonna be a different Helm chart that you're attempting to apply, right? So if you have two Helm charts you need to apply, you need two different resource sections. And the resource section just says, what Helm chart do you wanna apply, right? This name doesn't so much matter, but this name does. This is the name of the Helm repository that you would like to search, right? So normally, if you were doing this to the CLI, you would have a Helm installed and you would do a like something like a Helm repo add, and then the name of the repo you're adding, Jenkins, and then you would add the URL for that repository. And then what you would do is you would do a Helm repo search 
Jenkins, just search the repository you just added, and you would get back all the different charts within that repository, one of them being Jenkins. So just make sure these all match valid. Uh, you know, if you're going to, you can, you can actually have these charts hosted, hosted locally, or you can do this through a URL like I'm doing here. We have a values section. So you actually don't need a values section. You can leave this blank. You can comment this out. You can provide a full path here, uh, which I have actually done because it's in the same repository. It's relative to wherever uh, this actual .tf file is running, helm release.tf. And because I've defined this, I can actually override some of the key and key and values for these parameters in the values.yaml, right? So using set sensitive, uh, you could just do, you know, set, but then when Terraform creates the plan, it's going to show your, your username and password in the plan. If you do set sensitive, it's going to actually not show sensitive credentials in that plan. Um, and I know that these values here correspond to values in Jenkins values.yaml. Uh, so these are actually keys. So the names are keys and then the values to those keys that are held within Jenkins values.yaml. So I'm setting the administrator and some passwords here. I'm overriding them with these parameters here. So then now once this cluster comes up, um, we can attempt to log into Jenkins and we'll see if this is valid or not. All right. Now that that has finished uh, deploying the EKS cluster, and then you can see here, it says uh, Helm release Jenkins creation complete, right? I should be able to, oh, first, because this is a brand new cluster and I just created it, I actually need to um, connect to it. So uh, there's a command we can run, AWS EKS, yes, this one. So I ran this earlier, that's why it's in my history. You need the AWS command line to install, which I'm assuming you had installed because you couldn't run AWS configure otherwise. Um, the region your cluster is in, uh, update kube config will actually get you the kube config on the host that you're running this command from and the name of the cluster you would like the kube config from. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And now if you have kubectl installed, kubectl, get pause, I should be able to interact with this cluster. Let's make sure Jenkins came up and we can see two out of two pods running. Go get services. So now I should be able to Yep. Okay. So now in order to reach Jenkins from the outside world, I need to change this to type load balancer. So I could go kubectl patch and I ran this earlier as well. That's why it's in my history, but using the patch argument for kubectl, uh, I want to patch the Jenkins service uh, spec and I want to change the type to load balancer, right? So that's going to go ahead and change this Jenkins service from cluster IP to load balancer. So now if I get services again, uh, we can see that now I have a load balancer. So this will be the actual DNS address that was created by the network load balancer that was created by Elastic Load Balancing Service in AWS as soon as I created the load balancer type service, which is a feature of EKS. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to come on over to my browser and let's just do it here, 8080, HTTP, and the Jenkins pods take, so this is normal. The Jenkins pods take anywhere from three to five minutes to actually fully initialize, which means this isn't going to re, uh, resolve to anything properly until it does. So I'll come back once this is done. All right. So Jenkins has successfully launched and I'm successfully connected to it on port 8080. So now I should be able to log in using that admin username and password that I had set in the values section of the Helm provider resources section. And there we have it. I'm logged into Jenkins. You know, that was, so that was super quick. It only took, you know, one command to deploy the cluster. And yeah, maybe we had to fill in some values to, to, to match what we wanted. But the point is we deployed an entire Kubernetes infrastructure and a production application on top of it in one, uh, one line of code, basically, you know, Terraform apply. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you could click the link in the description to buy me a coffee, help support my new PC fund. Uh, I can't really record in 4K or encode 4K very well because my PC is so old and crappy. So support if you like content, uh, there'll be more coming and subscribe. Thank you.